Hey Explorers, I'm Jessica and today on Exploring the Local Life I'm going to talk to you about that time that we had something stolen from our RV and how grateful we are that it was just a small item and not anything big and then tips for you on how you can keep your RV safe from theft. So earlier this year we were staying at a campground, one that we had stayed at quite a few times before, and we actually had our gas can stolen from our RV. Now the gas can was not inside our RV, it was on the back rack of the RV, and usually we put things like our diesel portable um, can back there, the one for the gasoline, when we're not using our generator we put it back there and a few other miscellaneous items. Uh, the generator is always secured and locked, uh, but the gas cans we didn't have secured or anything. We just had them back there, and we were gone for the day, came back, and it was gone. Um, of course, we were kind of surprised about it because uh, we had stayed there before without having any incidents, and, um, you know, we thought it was a pretty, I mean, those things don't really cost that much money. We thought it was kind of weird that that was what was stolen from the RV. But, you know, it could have been much worse. And um, we have since then been more diligent about where we've been keeping things. And also we started doing a little bit more research on how to prevent theft in the RV. And today I'm going to share some of the things that we have learned um, as a result of our research. So there have been stories, and these aren't like fictional stories, but real stories from people that have had their whole RV stolen. Um, obviously, with the motorhome, you could just drive away, break a window, and uh, drive it away. Um, with a travel trailer or fifth wheel, it's a little bit more complicated in the sense that you need to be able to hitch it up somehow. Um, of course, with a motorhome, the main security things that you want to do there would be like you would with your car, keep it locked of course, um, any other um, theft, theft prevention devices, alarms or things like that you can install are helpful. Now with a travel trailer you can actually put a hitch lock, you can also do that on the fifth wheel. They work a little bit different. So for the travel trailer it's actually a hitch lock that fits right over the hitch and the way that it works is that it actually it prevents anybody from hitching up, like they can't get the ball under the hitch um, because it's all secured and locked. With the fifth wheel, the lock um, gets underneath the actual fifth wheel hitch and it's going to prevent anybody from trying to hitch it up to their truck and drive away. Now those are fairly easy to install and of course really great at preventing anybody from driving away with your travel trailer or your fifth wheel, so highly recommend getting those. Now, if you're going to be storing your RV um, for the season or something like that, you can also look into getting some sort of like wheel locks or like a boot um, that you put on there. So that will work whether you have a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a fifth wheel. You need to detach it there and no one can drive away until it's detached. Of course, if you are full timing or uh, taking frequent trips with it, something like that would probably not be practical. Um, but, you know, depending if you're going to be staying somewhere for a really long time, it might be something that might work for you. Um, of course, it would cause maybe complications in a case of an emergency that you have to unlock that. But, you know, so would a hitch lock. So just uh, do what makes sense for your particular RV lifestyle. Another measure that you can take to prevent theft in your RV is to replace all of your RV locks. Uh, you know, your RV comes with standard issue lock and key set and actually a lot of other RVers have a very similar <laughs> key set and locks to yours um, and of course they are fairly easy to pick and unlock so we recommend that you replace those you can get more secure items you can get like a keyless entry or you can get a deadbolt or you can get both if you have multiple doors whatever you feel most comfortable with that you think is going to work best for you. So get those replaced and make your RV more secure. Now an option that I hadn't considered until fairly recent is installing some sort of security system or surveillance system. Um, I thought, you know, that's overkill. I can see it in a house, but not in an RV. 
but Hippie in the Tech recently got Ring, which is really a video surveillance system, and they got it right by their front door because in an RV you don't have a peephole, so if somebody comes knocking, you either have to open your door or look out your window, and you know, depending on how you feel, how comfortable you are, um, you might not have all your windows open, you might not want to just like, you know, look out and have that person see you. This gives you the opportunity to see who and what, whatever is happening right outside of your door, and it you can operate it when you're inside your RV or if you're away, so that way, you know, you can get this, these images, these videos transmitted to your phone, and you can see if there's a problem, if you should open the door, or if you should call the authorities. So that is definitely an option for RVers, and it's a great way to monitor your RV even while you are away. So I've gone over some things that are pretty uh, unique to RV living, right? You're probably not going to have a trailer hitch. Um, in your house or anything, even though you might have a surveillance system. But I'm going to go over some things that you should be used to doing from your previous life when you were in your home that I'm just going to remind you about just in case. Make sure to always keep your doors and windows locked. When you're away, keep those blinds shut. If you're going to be gone for a extended period of time, go ahead and leave your lights on so that way um, your RV is well lit so you can have people sneaking into the shadows. And keep your valuables locked away, out of sight, or take them with you. So that way you don't have an easy target for people to come in and take your stuff. Now, I really hope that these uh, things that I discussed really help you to give you some strategies to keep your RV safe when you are either RVing or storing it, so that way nobody steals your stuff or steals your RV. Of course, nothing is 100%, so just use common sense, and the likelihood of this happening is fairly low, but these are great tips and information for you to implement in your RV life. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and hit the bell to get notifications and to subscribe to this channel. I'll catch you later. Bye. So I've gone over some things that, you know, I didn't necessarily know too much about going into this, but now I'm going to kind of talk about some standard practices, uh, or I was, but my cat got in the way. Hello. Now before we wrapped up, we did want to talk about the Road Life Project. I think you guys have probably heard us mention it a time or two, and basically it is a, an RVer social club, but it goes beyond that. It is about building community, it's about getting answers to things that you need, but it's all encompassing. So whether you're solo, you're retired, you're working age, you have like 10 kids that you RV with full time that you are homeschooling, all of these different folks will be included in the Road Life Project. And if you have cats or dogs or goats or whatever kind of animal that you travel with. You're welcome too. You're welcome too. And there were, could be like convergences, rallies, whatever. I don't actually know what the terms are going to be for our get togethers, meetups, and get togethers. We don't have no idea. Um, yeah. Go ahead. But one of the main functional components for full time RVers, whether you're solo, couples, families, you know, working age youths. Are we youths? Sure. We're youthful. Sure, or retirees good. is the health insurance component. That's one thing that as a working age couple, we're always thinking about whether it's provided by our jobs or now this opportunity with Road Life Project to get health insurance for maybe just Jessica, maybe the entire family. So something that you can partake as a member of Road Life Project is to get that option. That's right. And there will be like homeschooling type activities also online. So it, it's something for everyone. It's going to be a unique uh, RV social group. There are some out there, um, but this is a new one that's going to maybe fill in some gaps. Um, and of course, we're encouraging you to join. We're not saying don't join the other ones, but we're saying to come and join us at the Road Life Project. Get your health insurance. Get plugged into a homeschool community. Get plugged into a very dynamic group that's going to have all kinds of dynamics, all kinds of people all in this club. Exactly. If you're a full-timer, solo, like I said, or couples, we do have that connection with being able to get jobs while you're work camping. So that's another facet. Not only, how am I going to do this? I still need a job. Well, we're going to have resources where you can get jobs. How do I repair my RV? I've been doing this for two or three years and I always have to take it in for service. What if you want to do it yourself? 
you will have access to subject matter experts. Subject matter experts in RV repair, subject matter experts on how to find a job while you're RVing, getting the health insurance, and like Jessica said, one thing that she's going to be helping to focus on is the whole road schooling aspect, the homeschooling, unschooling aspect of full-time RVing. Yeah, and if you've ever felt like you want to be part of this group, but let's say you have friends that have kids, uh, maybe you're a little bit older yourself, maybe you're solo, but you haven't found maybe a club that everybody can go to the brewery together or everybody can go on a hike together in kind of an organized fashion. The Road Life Project will allow for that, and we're really excited about it. Um, it's going to launch in, what is it, like 60 days, 50 days? Less than we 50 days. We're really close in we're now. Close. So, so what you need up. to do is go to roadlifeproject.com, and you'll be able to sign up. And you'll be able to say, hey, you know, I'm new to this. I'm, a, you know, RVing by myself. I'm an RVing family. I'm RVing working age. So go check it out now. Sign up for updates as we get out there for that launch. Mm -hmm. And we want to launch as big as we can and get this going. A new community where we are creating what it is to be on this Road Life Project. So roadlifeproject.com. And make sure to let them know that you heard about Road Life Project from Exploring the Local Life. We're going to be on there, we're part of the community, and we're excited about it and can't wait to see you there. Thanks.